Tuning is perhaps one of the least considered yet most important aspects of music making. It has the ability to completely change the perception of the music that we hear and create. Hi, my name is Professor Bierson, and welcome to Turkish Oud Lessons. This is a series on the basics of Turkish music theory. And today in episode one, we will be covering the topic of tuning in Turkish music. The most common tuning system in use today across the world is probably equal temperament. This is the tuning that we find on modern pianos and guitars, and the default on digital instruments like keyboards and synthesizers. In equal temperament, all of the half steps are exactly the same distance apart, enabling us to create music that sounds the same in any major and minor key from any pitch on the piano. Turkish music, by contrast, is microtonal. This is because it uses intervals that are even smaller than a semitone or the distance between two keys on the piano, or frets on the guitar. So if there are intervals that are smaller than a semitone, how do we find them? And how do we play them if we can't use a piano or a guitar for reference? It all goes back to why we developed equal temperament in the first place. You see, both Western music and Turkish music base their understanding of pitch on the findings of the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras. As legend has it, one day Pythagoras was walking and heard blacksmiths hammering at metal. He noticed that when two hammers were struck simultaneously, that some of them produced harmonious sounds, while others produced dissonant sounds. Upon further examination, he realized that the hammer that was twice as small as another when struck produced a musical pitch that was exactly the same but one octave higher. This meant that musical pitches were generated from mathematical principles. In this case, the ratio 2 to 1 produces an octave. Pythagoras was a mystic who believed in the divinity of numbers. Harmony in music, therefore, was all part of the divine mathematical harmony that governs all existence. If dividing the size of a hammer by 2 produces an octave, what happens when we divide it by 3? Another harmonious interval is produced, the perfect fifth. You can actually see this on my oud. The point where the fingerboard of the instrument meets the soundboard divides the string exactly two-thirds of the way, creating a perfect fifth. That is part of the design of the instrument, merging geometry with arithmetic and music. Since fifths produce pitches that are different and not simply octave reproductions of the same pitch class, Pythagoras was able to generate an entire gamut of musical tones out of perfect fifths. Great, all is sensible in the universe. However, there was a problem. After 12 fifths, in theory, we should arrive back to a level that matches with an octave reproduction of the first pitch. In reality, that pitch is actually a little higher by a microtonal interval called a comma. This irrationality, in which should otherwise be a rational system, not only pokes a hole in Pythagoras' religious beliefs, it creates a dilemma that musicians have had to deal with for millennia. You see, no matter what style of music we use, we have to wrestle with constant adjustments to our pitches to be able to stay in tune. If you have pure fifths, then at some point your octaves will be out of tune. If your octaves are in tune, then at some point your fifths will be out of tune. The genius behind equal temperament is that by shaving a nearly imperceptible amount off of each fifth, one twelfth to be exact, we can produce a gamut of musical pitches that are always the same in relation to one another and that don't go out of tune at the octave. The trade-off is that all of our other intervals became slightly out of tune. In Turkish music, this is not the case. Chords in major and minor keys are not used as a basic element, and intervals need to be purely tuned. So, how does this work? Turkish musicians focus on this Pythagorean comma as the microtonal interval between semitones, creating more distinct pitches and intervals than exist in 12-tone, equal-tempered music. Using this comma enables Turkish musicians to adjust their tuning in order to maintain a harmonious relationship between different intervals depending on the musical context. That is the beauty of Turkish music. 
The greatest composers in the history of this music were the ones who created melodies that manipulated these interrelic relationships to discover the variety of harmonies that exist within them. Based on this fact, theorists of Turkish, Arab, Greek, and Persian music developed a series of tetrachords, or four-note scales, measured typically by dividing the length of the strings of an oud. One such tetrachord is known as charya. This is a segment of the Pythagorean major scale, derived from pitches generated from purely tuned perfect fifths. This is how it sounds on the oud. Notice how when I play the first and third notes, however, they are out of tune. If I lower the third by one comma, the third now forms a pure harmony with the first note at a ratio of four to five. I can even play a triad. Now, if I, we usually play this um, fourth down. If I play a tetrachord here, it's called the Rast tetrachord. Western music tuning according to the pure third is called just intonation, and rust is basically a justly tuned, uh, a tetrachord that creates a justly tuned third. Now between charga and rust, I have two types of whole step, one slightly bigger, the Pythagorean, or from the charga tetrachord. and one slightly smaller, the just or rust tetrachord. In Western music, these are known as major and minor whole steps. In Turkish, they are known as tanini and büyük mücennep. Now, if there are major and minor whole steps, there are also major and minor half steps. In the Charga tetrachord, we have a minor half step or bakie. Between the third and the fourth degrees. And in the Ras tetrachord, we have the major half step or the Kuchuk Mujenep. Between the third and fourth degrees. The difference between the major whole step and minor whole step is exactly one comma. This is the difference between Turkish music and Western music. In Turkish music, we don't try to eliminate or smooth out the difference. We keep both as distinct and harmonious entities, which each get their own tetrachord. If I use the Rast tetrachord's minor whole step, but begin my scale from A, I have what is called today the Ushak tetrachord. This tetrachord in theory features the minor whole step, but in practice, musicians will often lower the second scale degree not by one comma, but two to three commas, especially at cadences. This is for an effect that allows the tetrachord to sound like it pulls towards the A for the final cadence. Um, this is a term called tonal gravity, which was introduced by Ross Daly. If I take that second degree of Ushak and make it all the way flat, or five commas as we call it, this is what we call the Kurdi tetrachord. It's analogous to the Phrygian mode in Western music, and it uses the Western flat symbol. This scale fragment also follows Pythagorean tuning. If you think about it, it's like an upside down Charga tetrachord with the small half step, or Bakie, and then two large half steps, Tainini. Notice how, in a similar fashion to the Charga tetrachord, if I play this scale degree here with a third above it, it is out of tune, or with a third below it, it is out of tune. So again, I will raise it by one comma. 
create a purely tuned set of thirds and even create a minor triad. If I do that, I also add the pitch C sharp, which is one comma lower. That creates a major third with the tonic note A, and I get a new tetrachord, the Hejaz tetrachord. Now this is the tetrachord that often gets stereotyped with Turkish or Middle Eastern music in general in Western music or movies, and that's because it features this augmented second scale uh, interval. And you can see that because both of the pitches of that interval are actually contracted by one comma, and again that's to form the purely tuned thirds, then I get a contracted augmented second. Those are only a few of the tetrachords that exist in Turkish music, but they give you enough of the intervals to be able to understand how Turkish musicians are tuning their pitches in performance. Now, contrary to popular opinion, I don't believe that the tetrachords are the quote-unquote building blocks of makam. Rather, I think that they are pure music theory. They're an attempt to define intervals based on mathematical principles. Um, we'll talk more about the building blocks of makam in future lessons, but for now, let's just focus on tuning our pitches and finding the harmonious relationships that exist in the Turkish microtonal system. Thanks. Thank you.